Alright, and Seek and Destroy as always. Coming up on the four year mark, yes we are, uh, inching closer and closer to it every week. Discussions of Truth with Ian Trottier, I am he. You can find my work at iantrottier.com, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R. -T -T -E this week, scheduled to join the program Giacomo Knox, an American actor, graduate of Seton Hall, former U.S. Marine stunt performer and television producer, to talk about his current work, which is the Week with My Father, uh, basically. Uh, and, and what I wanted to do there was go into um, an African-American background and get firsthand a man who served his country and has drawn on strengths from his family to achieve uh, the things in his life as far as um, Knox's experience in not being on drugs, incarcerated, and living a healthy, uh, productive life. Again, and he, he umbrellas that under the influence of his father. Not all of us have that opportunity. Uh, others of us do, but not to the degree that uh, that we'd like. And then, of course, others identify fathers in their lives as uh, figures that aren't biologically related to them. Uh, and some of us certainly simply don't have fathers. Uh, very trying time in uh, the United States. Last week, we hosted Gerald Horn. He holds the Morris Professorship of History and African American Studies at the University of Houston. He holds a degree from Princeton, from Columbia, and also JD from the University of California, Berkeley. And prior to that, we hosted Ken LaCourt. Uh, do check out his news reporting at LaCourt News. And uh, he's a former Fox News um, executive. Prior to that, we went into uh, American Coup with William Arkin. I've got a full list of guests that have joined the program over the course of the, the past few years right at iantrottier.com, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R. -T -T -E the program started in Miami based on really a, um, a suggestion. Uh, it was, uh, I was asked to join Winwood Radio uh, and express the research that I had done behind Zika which was the epidemic locally to South Florida at the time, uh, and a controversial pesticide that was being sprayed. What was the controversy behind the pesticide? Well, it was banned in the year, uh, uh, banned by the European Union as a known neurotoxin, something that causes microcephaly in developing children. Um, studies out of Sweden, um, and it was also rejected by Governor Roseo in Puerto Rico, the shipment uh, via the health world, world Health Organization. So little did I know when I started that in 2006 that lo and behold, be dealing with a another health epidemic, but this time a health pandemic, a global health issue, right? So kind of, it's, it's a bit of a deja vu for me, having come from Miami and experiencing uh, experiencing this so again, I've been remote now for uh, for uh, a, about a year. Coming up on about a year, I've been remote. Nothing more than coincidence in that regard. Uh, just simply coincidence. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to to broadcast outside of Miami, and really initially, I had worked on broadcasting outside of Miami uh, to have uh, the uh, remote uh, ability and capability and um, 
and, and that started, I was still feeding into Windwood Radio. Uh, they have since uh, gone to gone strictly to a pod, podcast platform. So, for instance, uh, you're likely listening to me post live. It's possible you're listening to me live. Uh, I do cut into uh, this. Isn't my five o'clock hour? So I'm coming in a little bit earlier today. Uh, typically, Wednesdays at five o'clock is when you can hear me live. Uh, discussionsoftruth.com, stopmassmedia.com, freedomreserve.com, iantrachier.com are just a few of the platforms that you can hear me live on. Um, Freedom Reserved, because there's a book by that name, Freedom Reserved, No More Lies, coming out in October, Trine Day Publishing. That's been pushed back from May, and May it was the initial release date, uh, but due to the health pandemic I'm assuming that's been pushed back. So look for Freedom Reserve No More Lies. You can pre-order it right now at Barnes & Noble and also Amazon uh, and other outlets if you're outside of the United States uh, chapters in Canada. Uh, and it's it's available for release in Denmark, Australia, UK, and, and other countries. So Freedom Reserve No More Lies, freedomreserve.com. You can hear me live. I simply stream and cut into those uh, those sites uh, for you to hear me hear me live. Otherwise, you can hear a 24-7 re-broadcast of ch- chosen, select chosen uh, shows that I've decided to air and stream uh, around the clock. So that's, it, 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 if you go to those sites and you click the radio or listen now button, that's typically what you're going to get outside of the Wednesday 5 o'clock hour. So, uh, being outside of Miami, this is a bit of a deja vu. Uh, when March had rolled around, and whoa, here's this, here's this uh, coronavirus, a novel coronavirus, uh, which Dr. Simone Gold says isn't even a novel. I'm certainly no one to argue with her. She's got a MD from the University of Chicago. She's also got a uh, law degree from Stanford. So what's interesting is that her video goes viral as she stands on the steps of the Supreme Court with other select doctors to talk about the safetyness and the effectiveness of hydroxychloroquine. And video goes viral, 18 million views, uh, streamed live by Breitbart, and boom, out of nowhere, shut down. Within 24 hours, her website closed, and uh, the video taken off of uh, Twitter and uh, so other social media platforms. So, personally, um, I posted, I reposted it, and boom, YouTube took it down. I also reposted another sip of it, snip of it, 24 hours after the initial 24 hours when it was taken down, and boom, YouTube took that down. Um, so we are being censored, folks. And I don't care if you are a Democrat, and I don't care if you are Republican. And if you're listening to this in the United States, you're in the United States. You are an American, and you need to get over your garbage political divide. Okay, the political divide is, divide is completely nonsensical, it's completely idiotic, idiotic, and it's driving the country backwards, in my view. So get over your political divide, agree to disagree, and do what's best for the survival and the continued survival of this country. Otherwise, in my view, right now, the thing is on the verge of spinning out of control into a chaotic system. Now, we can talk about the... We can talk about the design of that happening. Has it been? Has it been designed by design? Has this country's current state of being a corrupt, chaotic mess has that been by design? Has it been by design? And I have the ability to speak my mind because the words are coming right out of my mouth right now. Now, whether a tech company is going to censor this. Is one is another question whether someone is going to censor this and prohibit you from sending this to a friend or family member? That's another question, and it's a whole other discussion that we need to be having in this in this country, and we are having this in this country. But that's being turned on deaf ears, isn't it? In many cases, Jim Jordan, i.e., right? It's being turned on deaf ears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a picture. I'm going to paint a narrative for you. Before I get into that, I am going to tell you that next week, the program, and by the way, Tom Hartman uh, will be joining us here in the next few weeks. If you're not familiar with Tom Hartman, he's a nationally syndicated uh, uh, radio host. 
You can find his work. He gets into the uh, into this American corruption issue uh, deeply. Next week, we've got Murtaza Hussein joining us. He's a reporter at The Intercept. He focuses on national security and foreign policy. He has appeared on CNN, BBC, MSNBC, and other news outlets. So Murtaza Hussein has agreed to be join, uh, to join us next week. Again, we're pushing back Giacomo Knox, an American actor, graduate of Seton Hall University and former U.S. Marine, some former television producer, we're pushing him back to another date. We've got Tom Hartman coming up here in a few weeks, and next week, Murtaza Hussein. Okay, so, folks, Ian Trottier here, discussing the truth. Okay, I'm a Miami-based program. I've been remote now for about a year. Uh, type my name in. Type in Ian Trottier to any search engine. Use Google if you want. Ian Trottier, Zika, Miami Beach. And that's going to point you to an article that I wrote for Honey Colony. Uh, and by the way, speaking of Miriam Hennon, she'll be joining us again. We got her slated to, to, to rejoin us as well. Um, it's not a coincidence, folks, that Donald Trump has repeatedly discussed the fact of uh, his, 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 his motive to drain the swamp. That is, take out the corruption in the deep state. I'm not, I'm not pro-Donald Trump in the sense, but what I am is pro rooting out corruption and and I'm pro getting over political divide okay um, I'm pro getting over your ridiculous political biasness um, and I'm gonna tell you this I'm gonna tell you that I'm pro Black Lives Matters until they become violent and until they start insisting on instilling Marxist communistic socialistic uh, policies I'm anti-Black Lives Matters being painted all over the NBA courts, the Major League Baseball stadiums. These athletes are incredibly, disgustingly overpaid. We've allowed that. They're kneeling for the national anthem. I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if you're Democrat. Nobody kneels for that national anthem, in my opinion. You want to do it once in a while in protest? Sure. Now it's becoming a norm. And now those that don't kneel are becoming the enemy. Those that don't kneel are having a finger pointed at them. You got the WNBA walking out on the national anthem into their, what was it, the Liberty. They walked back into their locker room when the national anthem was played. That's a sign of total disrespect to the country that keeps you housed and safe. You've got internal issues that you want to work out. You feel that, you feel that like this Sabrina Ionescu. Ridiculous. Disgusting. She's a privileged white woman. Sure, she's got great athletic ability. Sure, so does LeBron James. So did Babe Ruth. So did Hank Aaron. So did Jim Thorpe, American Indian. So I don't care what ethnicity you are, what color you are, respect the country that keeps you safe. Because if it wasn't for that country, you'd be speaking Chinese, or you'd be speaking Arabic, or you'd be speaking another language. So sure, it's your right to walk off the floor in protest and back into your locker room. Sure, Kaepernick, it's your right to kneel against the national anthem because you feel disgusted by the way that you, a millionaire athlete, feel that you're being so poorly treated in society. And frankly, prove to me that George Floyd... Prove to me that that wasn't set up. Prove it. Yeah, that's a theory that it wasn't set up, and I'm speaking it. So prove to me that that wasn't set up. Okay? George, uh, Rodney King, beaten almost to a pulp in L.A. We've gone through this, folks. We've gone through this. I'm not siding with Tucker Carson, Fox News. I'm not saying that, yes, it was purposely funded by, who knows, George Soros. It was drama. It was made for TV to appeal to people. Everybody wants equality. I don't care what your color of skin is. I don't care what your language is. Everybody wants equality. And no country in the history of this race, human race, no country or civilization has offered so much freedom and equality to all walks of life, to all religions, to all languages as the United States. We've got... Clarence Thomas sitting on the Supreme Court for, now what, three decades has he been on the Supreme Court? Okay, we had Thurgood Marshall before him. 
We've got a Latino sitting on the or Latina sitting on the Supreme Court. We had a half black president. Check out Sharika Soul, my show last week. African American, raised by white parents. She's totally against people claiming to be black, yet they're not 100% black. They're not. They're biracial. So why don't they claim to be white? And why don't other blacks say that they're white? I don't have any African in me that I know of, at least not in the past few centuries. If we all stem from Africa via mitochondria Eve, I don't know. Sure, okay? My ancestry is primarily Dutch, English, Scottish, Irish, French. Okay? And now, because of that, I'm getting the finger pointed at me. Point the finger at me. I don't care, but you... Regardless of what your ethnic, ethnic, ethnical makeup, you have the same privileges and the same opportunities in this country as I do. Now, you can become a police officer if you want. If you're Chinese American, if you're Mexican American, you can become a police officer. And you can help clean up those police departments. But defunding the police department, you're asking for anarchy, folks. Seattle, Portland. You're asking for complete chaos. And your streets will be overrun. It'll be a power shift. And who will that power be shifted to? Likely, your drug dealers. Likely, your cartels. Because that is who you'll then be reporting to that will control your streets. So, you want to create that for yourself? As far as I'm concerned... You might as well move to Russia. You might as well move to China. You might as well. And I don't care. Again, I don't care if you're white. I don't care what you are. But I'm going to speak up to the country that I live in. in and I'm going to speak up to for its safetyness. And every one of us should be concerned about safety. But getting back to standing or kneeling for the national anthem, my personal feeling is that it's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Look, okay, fine. 9 11 hit. My first reaction was to join the Marines and go shoot up the people that were being blamed for doing that. I frankly don't believe in violence, so I never joined the military. Ever have I ever joined the military. Okay, I didn't believe, I didn't support Bush taking troops into Iraq. And then how did they get into Afghanistan? Right? I didn't support any of that. I didn't support violence. I don't support violence. Okay? But that doesn't mean I'm going to kneel for the flag that represents my safety. That doesn't mean I'm going to kneel because my lineage doesn't connect to the founding fathers of the country, and it doesn't. My lineage has no direct, I have no direct DNA or link to the founders of this country. Okay? My lineage is primarily from Canada centuries in Canada and then Scotland okay I don't have any direct but but that doesn't mean I'm going to kneel for the flag it doesn't mean that so I personally have an issue with it again I don't have an issue with black lives matter as long as they're peaceful and as long as they are respective of democratic values Marxist values are not democratic, folks. Marxist values are not democratic and not symbolic of what has made this country great. Don't give me the argument that blacks haven't helped make this country great. Because every kid, when I was growing up, wanted to be like Mike, and I don't care what color they were. Everybody wanted to be like Mike. And I'm talking about Michael Jordan. He's a hero, an athletic hero, and just a hero in general as symbolizing what it means to be a great American. Yes, okay, he did it on the piggyback, on the back of his athletic ability. Nothing wrong with that. But the way he carried himself with class, with dignity, and how he treated other people and respected other people. Okay, we can use other examples, but I'm going to get into some other issues. Let me start with the mask debate.
and then I'm going to take it to currency. I'm going to give you a broad picture of what I believe is happening. Again, if you want to trace where I started my program, typing in Ian Trottier, yes, it's a French name, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R, type that in, Zika, Miami Beach. Put that into your search browser. That'll bring up an article from Honey Colony, or you can access my website, iantrottier.com. You can access my website, and you'll find the nexus of what has brought me to where I am today. Now, where am I today? I'm standing up for my right to wear a mask or not. My opinion is that the virus is not what it's made out to be by media. It's not NOT. It's not as threatening as the media makes it out to be. Okay, and again, I can look back at the ICANN records, but I'm pretty sure I bought Stop Mass Media. That is a domain that I own. I bought that before the COVID-19 pandemic. So I have known for a while that media is corrupt. And the way that mass media is portraying COVID-19 to be a major threat I disagree with. My opinion, as a human being that is still living and breathing, I'm entitled to my opinion, just like you're entitled to your opinion, just like any scientist or medical doctor is entitled to their research and their personal opinion. By the way, newsflash, Bill Gates is not medically trained in any way. He's not a doctor. Okay? My stance, folks is that a mask does not need to be worn. And again, I'll base that not only on my personal opinion, but it's enforced by the research done in the opinion, therefore, of Dr. Simone Gold. Okay? I value what she says based on her academic achievements. That's my personal opinion to value what she says. An MD from the University of Chicago and a JD from Stanford Law. My opinion is she's probably pretty well educated and very well balanced in her thinking. She has recently come out and said masks are not effective. In fact, Dr. Fauci has said masks are not effective. But that actually predates my innate feeling initially that a mask was not effective. I'm not going to live my life wearing a mask because someone else is afraid that I might be carrying the virus and they can catch the virus. You wear a mask. You're afraid you're going to catch the virus for somebody else that's either wearing a mask or not wearing a mask? Then you protect yourself. If I catch the virus and get sick and or die, that's on me. You protect yourself by wearing your mask. Don't demand that I wear a mask. Because that's my choice. All right? And I'm standing up for it. So, let me expand on that. As I spoke to a local mayor in the jurisdiction that I'm currently re residing in, I said, you know, he was wearing a mask. And I said, how do you personally feel about wearing that mask? And he told me, he says, Ian, I would not be wearing this mask if I was not an elected official. Okay, expand on that. What does that mean? Well, the governor of the state has mandated that a mask be worn. And I want to respect that governor. Okay, so you're simply wearing a mask out of respect for the governor's mandate, but you personally feel, as an elected official of the locals who have elected you, you personally feel, and those local citizens value your opinion, you personally feel that a mask is not important. Yes, but I don't want to be fined by the governor. Well, the local police chief has said he won't be fining people and he won't be enforcing the mask mandate. 
So I said, let me ask you this then. Have you had this conversation with the governor about how you feel about wearing a mask? I have tried to contact him the previous eight weeks. I've received one response and he blew me off. Okay. Does that sound like the governor is respecting your viewpoint? He didn't respond to that. So then I continued. And I said, I'm going to take it as the fact that governor is not respecting how you feel. So if the governor's disrespecting how you feel about wearing masks, why should you be then respecting how the governor feels about wearing a mask? Again, it's this, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Protect yourself. Nobody's stopping you from protecting yourself. Nobody's stopping you from covering up. So cover up. Respect, uh, uh, protect yourself. Stay in your house if you want to stay in your house. That's your choice. You don't want to go to work? Don't go to work. Protect yourself. Stay at home. That's your choice. But don't inhibit my ability to breathe in the air that we've all been given freely by the creator of this earth and this universe. Don't inhibit my ability to get up and go to work every day. Don't lock me down because you don't want to be infected. Lock yourself down. So, where am I going with the mask? And I told the mayor, I says, look, what's the next step here? What's the next step? The next step, in my view, Ian Trottier, is a vaccine mandate. And I says, Mayor, how do you feel about a vaccine mandate? And the mayor told me, folks, he says, there is no way, no way anyone's going to mandate a vaccine on me and put a vaccine in my body. Really? Really? Yet here he's saying that he would not be wearing a mask if he wasn't an election official. So I'm led to believe that he's going to stand up for himself and his people that he's repre excuse me, representing should a mandatory vaccine come into his jurisdiction? I put little faith in that. And I said, you need to be standing up for your conviction now about how you feel about a mask. In a neighboring city, I had a similar discussion with the chief of the police. And that chief of police is actually right now Got a lawsuit pending. A, a, an accused pedophile in the area. Very wealthy man, folks. A very wealthy pedophile. Sound familiar? Epstein? So, you, wherever you are, whichever political or social or economic or academic title or status you hold, you need to be standing up for what you believe in. You don't want to wear a mask? Don't wear a mask. Because the next imposition is going to be a vaccine. And when someone's holding a needle up to your arm, forcing you to be injected, you need to ask yourself, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Caveat. A few days ago, Donald Trump speaking on a roundtable platform at the American Red Cross in D.C. saying that military deployment is already pre-organized with a general leading it up to distribute the vaccines. Yes, I said military. And yes, I'm just repeating what Trump has said. He then notioned over to Dr. Fauci in that panel discussion to expand on that. What is Dr. Fauci now getting involved in military operations? And why is the military being involved in vaccine distribution? The military is for force. The military is to fight. Are you ready to deal with the military in regards to vaccine distribution, folks? Are you ready for that? Okay. Local transcript from a group, unidentified, that is against mask mandates. And frankly, look, 
I, it blows me away that we're even having this discussion. It blows me away that families are being divided. It blows me away that people are being attacked because they're not wearing a mask or they are wearing a mask. I just find it absolutely disgusting. And anyway, I'm urging you to stand up for what you believe in. Do it peacefully. Okay? Do it peacefully. Of course, tell that to the military. Petition complaint against unconstitutional mandates, unaccountable health officials, and state local state of emergency. Here's the uh, transcript, and I'm going to read this live. It's going to take a few minutes, and then from there I'm going to expand on where I think the vaccines are all going. Okay? You can get my view on this. This is a formal petition of complaint and demand of action by the people of the practices of this local county commission. City County Health Department and Health Officer and fraudulent, quote, state of emergency, using skewed, unproven, and unscientific data to justify the mandates declared in this county. It's very concerning to us that a free country, this is happening in the United States right now, folks. This is happening in the United States right now. Okay? A free country, some unelected official and department of unelected officials holds and wields so much power to cavalierly practice medical tyranny and, this, this transcript says, Nazi-like actions against this county businesses, these county businesses and events, making demands that are not law, that could cause medical harm, assume no liability, and unlawful impose and collection of fines, while at the same time the health office officer enjoys complete autonomy. And I mispronounced that. Autonomy. It is equally concerning that the county commissioners called a state of emergency with no due cause, merely following the path of other agencies and opinions of the county health officer in lieu of examining the legitimacy of the data to make a scientific and rational determination against the situation. Does the governor of this state, for instance, really believe that a mask is going to protect him against the so-called novel coronavirus? Or would he be exempt? It wouldn't get And he's just wearing a mask to appease, appease those who are funding him and his state. Why is this even an issue in the country, folks? Why is it that, for instance, the Georgia governor is not mandating Masks. But, for instance, the California governor is mandating masks. Evidence and information. Since the governor's unconstitutional, tyrannical executive order is based on fraudulent state of the emergency and faulty data such as faulty coronavirus tests and their subsequent results are being reported to the news in places like Florida with people receiving notification of positive COVID-19 results even though they didn't remain in the line to get tested or the accelerated emergency use authorization summary of the RT-PCR test states that it is not definitive and the RT-PCR tests are written over and over and over and over and over and again to be ineffective. There's a study out of Bulgaria that I was reading the other day that shows those, those, those tests being uh, uh, insufficient, uh, unreliable. This is all administered by the World Health Organization. Who's controlling the World Health Organization, folks? This is the dirt you need to be digging up. This is what you need to be looking into. Your time is nigh. Positive results do not rule out bacterial infection or co-infection with other viruses. The agent detected may not be definitely the cause of the disease. End quote. The FDA on May 14, 2020, Cochrane Reviews, medical research data on May 25, 2020, American Family F Physician, an evidence-based clinical journal on July 1, 2020, have all stated the inaccuracy of the consistency of the COVID test. Medical News Today on June 6, 2020 reported that one in five tests is not valid. The president of Tanzania, John Magufuli, was concerned for his people's safety because he respected, suspected there was something wrong with the COVID testing. He decided to have animal and fruit samples sent in for testing and they came back positive, thereby exposing how faulty the COVID testing is. All leaders and representatives should take the time to investigate things that, are, that don't seem right. Then, there's a misrepresentation of the cause of death from medical coding proposal proposes or on the death certificates such as Fox News reporting on May 16, 2020 that those who died with COVID-19 have been included in the count with those who died of, quote, COVID-19. 
The Illinois public health official stated in the press conference that if someone was in hospice and was going to die in a few weeks, and then there was also found that they were also found to have COVID, it would be counted as a COVID death. She, excuse me, she then explained, if an individual died of a clear alternative, Fincheron of Oro Valley commissioned a study showing skewed reporting data as reported on July 15, 2020 by Tucson.com. Dennis G. Rancourt, Ph.D. of Ontario Civil Liberties Association, in June 2nd, 2020, published an extensive report on false death reporting and cause. Okay, I did not write this. This is simply something I'm reading. This is uh, this is a more or less petition that's being sent to the uh, governor's office from 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 uh, the location I'm currently at. It is suspe suspect that there is even any le legitimate pandemic at all when you consider that there is only 47 to 51 deaths, depending on the source you use, concerning the data of this petition. COVID-19 in this state compared to influenza rates, according to the CDC's website, 2015, 183 deaths in 2016, 147 deaths, 2017, 185 deaths, 218, 852 deaths. These numbers include pneumonia. The seasonal flu figures uh, without pneumonia are hard to extract from the DPHHS website. But that, but seem to be roughly the same as the COVID-19 supposed death toll numbers. It begs the question why we didn't have a state emergency in any of these years, or ever for that matter. The suspicion mounts when you consider the extremely high survival rate of COVID-19, even taking into consideration that the numbers are all skewed in the first place. Ironically, any information posted on social media such as Facebook, YouTube, which challenges the status quo, is censored by deletion. The question that needs to be asked is why? The executive order stated above is not law or lawful it is not binding to this county business these county businesses or to any citizens of this state even putting all fraud aside an executive order is not binding because it is not law the governor cannot make a law only our representative legislation can make law as time marches forward if not abated the fraud and misrepresentations will increase which will most likely exacerbate the problem solving greater tyrannical actions therefore a redress of grievances in order while there is still a semblance of a free society, does it sound like, for instance, you, you know, you've got you've got a you've got a head of state, the governor of the state? Does it sound resemblant to uh, how George Bush uh, overrode Congress and took troops into Iraq? Well, did that represent your best interests, folks? Were you given an option? The Congress people that you elected in the Congress were they given an option? No, no, they weren't. Was George Bush puppeted? I agree that absolutely yes. Unfortunately for the deaf and hard of hearing, face mask and pens impedes communication ability, putting the elderly especially in danger. Face masks have not been not only been proven to be ineffective, but even harmful to a person's health. As reported by Technocracy.news, okay? Now, Technocracy.news, I'm, I'm glad this person is citing techno technocracy because we are living in a technocracy, right? Where the people that control the technology, tech, 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 tech right? That buzzword, tech, 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 make you feel so cool, doesn't it, right? It makes you feel so futuristic. You're cashing in on, on your Bitcoin rises, right? Cashing in on, 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 all, on the stocks that you're owning of your tech, 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 tech companies. But does it represent a democracy? Well, a technocracy, a technocracy doesn't, folks. It centralizes the way you live your life. Technocracy. Uh, that is... Uh, uh, that's Wood. What? What? Uh, that's uh, the author Wood, and 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 he also wrote. Uh, I believe he wrote uh, Technocrats over Washington with uh, the late, uh, well, with who is now late, uh, Dr. Anthony Sutton. And if you go to my website, you find a number of publications from Anthony Sutton on my website. He's a former Stanford Hoover Fellow, taught at Stanford for ten for seven years. Okay, so uh, here's a quote from Technocracy News in their article: Masks are neither effective nor safe. A summary of the science, both N. 9-5 and surgical masks have been found to harbor influenza virus. Harbor influenza virus. They further found pathogens on the outside of surgical masks which contaminate the wearer and others by the wearer's continual uh, touching of the mask. Masks significantly limit oxygen to those who wear face masks, especially pregnant women. It went on to further state that, con that continued mask wearing decreased a person's immune system, thereby increasing infection chances. So, this county would then be held accountable and liable for health injury concerns, forced mask wearing. 
the consistency of the advice of supposed supposed medical experts, Dr. Anthony Fauci and U.S. General Jerome Adams, <coughs> Black Lives Matter, right? Um, who have directed the the whole pandemic? Yeah, I just took a shot at the, black, at the BLM movement. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Listen to my episode last week with Sharika Sol, a complete African, very dark woman. Okay, she has to be very good looking as well. She's very pretty. I didn't mention that to her on the air, but I did mention to her, and I'll mention to you right now that, and I'm a white man. Okay, uh, and and the most most of my uh, most of my uh, uh, friends of the opposite sex have been of not my ethnicity. Okay, uh, one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life, likely the most beautiful woman I've ever saw in my life, was a black woman in the Dallas a a airport. Okay, there's nothing racist about me. Beauty's beauty, and it doesn't know ethnicity. So get past your 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 ridiculous racist lines and divisions. <clears throat> the reason I'm coughing is because uh, uh, Dr. Adams is tied right into this cabal that's that's corrupted this country. No choice of his own. He probably doesn't even realize it. Okay, so uh, Jerome Adams, who have directed the 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 whole pandemic state of emergency concerning face masks, leaves much skepticism skepticism. To, to the validity of their knowledge. Both stated months ago that the use of face masks are not effective and now have since retracted those st statements and advised the complete opposite. A representative of the U.S. Centers of Disease and Control, hmm, the CDC, told routers, quote, the CO2 will slowly build up in the mask over time in addition to having carbon dioxide build up the masks also caused lower oxygen levels. Republican Ohio State Representative Nino Vitale conducted a live experiment using a portable multi-gas detector to check if the oxygen levels were safe. The results were face masks, 17% oxygen, N95 masks, 18.1 oxygen, surgical masks, 17.6 oxygen. These results are below what the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, considers safety. Any atmosphere with any oxygen level below 19.5, folks, percentage to be oxygen deficient and immediately dangerous to life or health. Wow. According to the following scientific studies, Dennis Rancourt, PhD, asserts and establishes in his published paper, quote, masks don't work. A review of science relevant to the COVID-19 social policy dated April 2020 archived at archive.is slash capital R U capital A 5Z that wearing surgical mask and respirator re respirators does not reduce the risk of contracting a verified illness. Here are some of the scientific studies. The entire published paper, Dr. Rancourt with internet links submitted with this petition, Jacobs J. L. et al. 2009. Quote, use of surgical masks, face masks to reduce the incidence of the common cold among health workers in Japan, a randomized controlled trial, end quote, American Journal of Infection Control, volume 37, issue 5, page 417, 419, conclusion, N95 masks. Healthcare workers, HCW, were significantly more likely to experience headaches. Face masks used in HCW was not demonstrated to provide benefits, benefit in terms of cold symptoms or getting colds. Cowling B et al., 2010. Quote, face masks to prevent transmission of influenza virus and systematic review, epidemiology, and infection. Page 138, 449, or well, section 138-449-4956. Conclusion, none of these studies reviewed showed a benefit from wearing a mask in either HCW or community members and households. Okay, continuing. Ben Reza et al., 2012, the use of face masks and reps, reps, Respirators to prevent transmission of influenza, a systematic review of scientific evidence, influenza and other respiratory viruses. Conclusion, there was 17, there were 17 eligible studies. None of these studies established a conclusive relation between respiratory use and protection against influenza, infection. Okay. They threw out another study. I'm going to go over that. I'm going to skip that, rather. The conclusion, Dr. Rancourt is follows. There had been extensive randomized controlled trial RCT tri studies and made a meta-analysis reviews of RCT studies, which all show that masks and resp resp respirators, third time uh, difficult to pronounce that word, do not work to prevent respiratory influenza-like illness is or respiratory illnesses believed to be transmitted by droplets and aerosol particles. Furthermore, the relevant known fit 
Physics and biology, which I review, are such that mask and respirators should not work. It would be paradox if masks and respirators worked, given what we know about viral respiratory diseases. The main transmission path is long residence time aerosol particles greater than 2.5 UM, which are too fine to be blocked, and the minimum minimum infective dose is sim smaller than one aerosol particle. The present paper about masks in illustrates the degree to which governments, the mainstream media, and institutional propagandists can decide to operate in a science vacuum or case with the current global lockdown of over 1 billion people, unprecedented experiment in medical and political history. We are free citizens of this state, and our rights are guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution and the Constitution of the state, even tyrannical times, which by all serious observation is apparent. Therefore, we reject forced medical advice and or procedures, and certainly tyrannical actions of an unelected and seemingly unaccountable health authority or a health department, especially when the state of emergency, quote, end quote, is steering people towards forced vaccinations, folks, as a governor mentioned in his executive order speech with new and highly suspect technologies such as RNA vaccination, we are responsible. American citizens who have the individual liberty to choose to improve or implement our own health care choices for our own immune system and bodies to ward off pathogens we don't appreciate, nor do we accept the use of force of unproven means that affect our own personal health care or based on reasoning. It is or someone else's health care, which may even become a possible future liability issue, as we already mentioned. This is collectivism and not what our Constitution is founded on. The Constitution is founded on individual rights and listed in the Bill of Rights, not collective rights. Thomas Jefferson said, Rightful liberty is unobstructed action according to our will within limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others. I do not add within the rights of the law, because law is often but the tyrant's will and always so when it violates the rights of the individual, end quote, Thomas Jefferson. And former congressman and presidential candidate had these wise words today to, to say, freedom is not defined by safety, freedom is defined by the ability of citizens to live without government interference. Government cannot create a world without risk, nor would we really wish to live in such a fictional place. Only a, a totalitarian society would even claim absolute safety as a worthy ideal because it would require local state control over its citizen lives. Liberty was meaning only liberty has meaning only if we still believe in it when terrible things happen and false government security blankets beckon. Rights are not guaranteed by the Constitution. They are only protected by it. Rights as life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness come from God or create or our creator. Breathing the fresh air uninhibited by mask is our individual liberty and it comes from God. The Nuremberg trials admitted the proclaim and proclaimed to humanity that there is a higher law and authority that people can and even governments are subject subject to. It is proclaimed any preventive diagnostic and therapeutic medical intervention is only to be carried out with the prior free and informed consent of the person concerned based on adequate information. The consent should where appropriate, be expressed, and may be withdrawn by the person concerned at any time and for any reason without disadvantage or prejudice. In no case should a collective community agreement or the consent of a community leader or other authority substitute for an individual's informed consent. Relief. Last paragraph. It is your duty as elected county representative to honor your oath of office office Discerning the abilities, the absolute seriousness of the horrible, inexcusable situation and start to protect the citizens of your county instead of furthering the fraud, abuse, and increasing tyranny. Regardless of what other counties of this state do, what the other states are doing or in this country, we respect you to protect the individual liberty of each citizen as the Constitution of the U.S. and of this state, which you took an oath to uphold. We demand that you immediately repeal the fraudulent and declare a state emergency in this county, which is not based on legitimate science, where the data are common sense, and which was originally declared in zero cases and zero deaths. The state emergency is fraudulent in its declaration as well as fraudulent in its constitution. 
violating the Constitution of this state, Article 2, Section 3, we also demand that you cease and desist with terrorizing citizens and business owners with fear-driven propaganda and unconstitutional draconian dictates and actions. The people further demand a redress of grievance by seeking the remedy via nullification toward our complaint and information stated in this petition, such as the sheriff of this state, with their statement of refusal to, to enforce the unconstitutional face mask dictate. Last dis dictate. Lastly, we demand better oversight by the health officials or workers in the future to protect the citizens of the county and further harm from further harm. We look forward to your prompt response to the remedy of our petition, which will proceed preclude the people from filing a notice of liability. Happy to share that state with you. Perhaps reach out to me if you have interest. Um, let's take it to another level here, folks. Mandate Max, and this is just going to be my opinion, based off my research. I urge you to do your own. Mandatory masks will lead, just a few months from now, to mandatory vaccines. Let's now take a look at a couple things as to a couple reasons as to why the mandatory vaccine. Why the mandatory vaccine? You know, let me read this to you. I'm gonna read this uh, as I try to wrap up here quick, but um, this might appall you and might not. And by the way, you had over a million people in Berlin protesting peacefully, mind you, peacefully. Okay, very important word there about the anti-masks. Recently, uh, RFK Jr. debated Alan Dershowitz. Dershowitz, in that debate, is quoted as saying, and if the vaccination is to prevent others from the spread of a contagious virus, you have no right to refuse to be vaccinated. Alan Dershowitz is quoted as saying that. You have no right to refuse to be vaccinated. So where is this vaccine going to end up? Well, take a look at Microsoft Patent W0, excuse me, W O two zero two zero zero six zero six zero six. My understanding was awarded in February. It was filed months prior to that. Let's also look at ID twenty twenty, San Francisco based company funded by the Rockefeller Foundation and the uh, Microsoft. And the objective there is to tattoo everyone with a digital identification, okay, scannable, meaning your health records and whether whatever what other what other information um, what other information you are prone yourself to uh, or you're allowing yourself to give to the tech company. Um, then let's again let's look at Let's look at the vaccine. Okay, I'm not going to get into the numbers because I don't have them in front of me, but we're going to claim we're going to see that it's being rushed to market. Right? It's it's being rushed to market right now. Our clinical trial is going to be clinical trial is going to be safe, effective. Bill Gates is openly calling for seven billion people to be vaccinated. Trump has recently said that the military will be used to distribute the vaccine. Military is used for war, folks. The military is used for war. If you're hearing this, you're resonant. You, these words are resonating with you. You need to pick up the phone. You need to write to Trump right now. You need to write to the generals in the army. You need to write to the generals in whatever branch of the military that's going to be distributed by. The military is used for war. The military is used for war, folks. Why are they being used to distribute a vaccine? The military is used for forks. Why are they being used to distribute a vaccine? Or why are they projected to be used, being used to distribute a vaccine? Okay. Um, your country has changed drastically in this past six months. Your country will continue to change even more drastically in the next six months, especially if you allow your military to distribute vaccines. And even more especially if you're allowing them to mandate that distribution to all citizens. Where are the tech companies going with these vaccines? 
So that Microsoft patent I just mentioned, I'm going to re-mention it, W0 2020-0606006, is a cryptocurrency patent that Microsoft has been awarded to run a cryptocurrency off of a microchip, either on a device, and you can look in the patent and correct me if I'm wrong, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, or by a microchip that can be inserted in a vaccine and inserted into your system. They can very possibly insert it to live right underneath your skin. Catherine Austin Fitz. She's a Wharton grad, a Yale grad, former advisor in the White House. She has said that the U.S. dollar is being purposely driven into the ground. What's the next step once the U.S. dollar crashes? You have 50 million people unemployed right now. Because they're scared to leave their house, they're scared of a vaccine, they're wearing masks. Let's just assume they're all wearing masks. Most of them are, I'm sure. They won't leave the house, they won't work. They're living in fear. Kind of like 9-11, right? Weren't you living in fear after 9-11? Worried about terrorists blowing up your car, blowing up your house, blowing up your bridge, blowing up your city. Right? Same kind of fear, same kind of, same kind of fear isn't it? You feel the same? What's the next step once the dollar crashes, folks? The next step is a digital currency. FDR confiscated all public gold in the 1930s. The Federal Reserve was established in 1913. The Federal Reserve, everything I know and read, is unconstitutional. It's a private banking organization, cartel, has private shareholders. It's never audited. They say they don't have any gold, yet they regulate the U.S. Treasury and they regulate the United States economy. Similar to the Bank of England that sits in the city of London, which is a corporation and not part of England. It just has England in its name. It's a Roman banking mechanism that nor William the Conqueror in 1066 was able to conquer. That treaty is available on their website and stands today in 2020. It's a Roman banking central banking mechanism that threads its way through Germany. Make no mistake about that. JFK got his head blown off. Why? Good question. And who blew it off? Because most believe that Lee Harvey Oswald did not perpetuate that, per perpetuate that crime. Yet, nonetheless, JFK died, and he knew darn well the corruption in the CIA then, in the early 60s, and knew of the corruption in the banking system, just like Andrew Jackson, the only president of 45 U.S. presidents, the only president, a Democrat, who left federal office without a debt. And he ran on the campaign slogan, folks, kill the bank kill the bank. This country has been plagued by outside European bank, central banking control since its inception in so much George Washington owned shares of the Bank of England during the American Revolution. Yes, your hero, George Washington. Yes, a white man. Okay, don't get racial with me. And you shouldn't get racial with anybody because it's a waste of your time. George Washington owned shares. What's, what's, what's George Washington doing on owning shares of the Bank of England during a war with the enemy? He owned shares of the Bank of the enemy. enemy. Why? Well, shedding a little light on the situation. The Bank of England? Again, it's not English. It's not English, folks. Just like the Federal Reserve is not American. So that's the nexus, in my opinion. That's the nexus of your problem. You need to... Stop your ridiculous racial protesting and rioting and start and put your time towards something more useful like protesting against the Federal Reserve. Like calling Ron Paul and forming an army, if you will, of protesters to audit the Federal Reserve, get some justice for the ta American taxpayers, abolish it if you need to. On the flip side, U.S. Treasury says they don't have any precious metals. They don't have any gold. So where's the gold? Is it in Fort Knox? Because Fort Knox doesn't get it audited. 
It had one audit, and that was controlled by the Rockefellers. Oh, yeah, that special name, Rockefeller, right? That you weave right into conspiracy theories. No conspiracy about that. 1912, Standard Oil went through an antitrust lawsuit. That company, just a year later, the Federal Reserve was organized. I would beckon to guess that the Rockefeller Foundation are the some of the largest shareholders of the Federal Reserve, but why should I even have to guess, right? No American should have to guess. Every American should know exactly who the shareholders of the Federal Reserve are. The Standard Oil was a monopoly. The creation of the Federal Reserve is a monopoly. Monopoly. It's a monopoly over the way you live your life, America. It's a monopoly over your politics. It's a monopoly over your news. It's a monopoly over how your military is used worldwide to control uh, natural resources. It's a monopoly over your education, what your kids receive in public schools. Monopoly. When Standard Oil was dissolved, it broke into, I believe, 13 separate companies, and the Rockefellers maintained majority share ownership over all those companies. That's not theory, folks. That's no theory. That's fact. The UN sits off of Murray here in Hill in Manhattan on land donated by the Rockefellers. The Rockefeller own a patent on the Zika virus that you can order if you have the credentials from ATCC, a London firm. I said the Zika patent. They also own the majority shares of Chevron Chemical Corporation that engineered the pesticide in Miami that was used to quote-unquote combat the Zika virus. There was no Zika virus ever found in Miami. If you have papers for that, show them to me. Because Dr. Michael Hall, MD, Cornell residency, I believe, said he hasn't found them either. You're being brainwashed, folks. You got a blindfold over your eyes, yet you're wearing a mask. You don't need either one of them. In fact, you don't realize you have a blindfold on. W0 2020 uh, 06 Microsoft patent to run a cryptocurrency. That's where this is going once this dollar crashes. The Bank of England's already debating over a digital currency. That's America's future unless you make a stand right now. Uncle Sam. Once a digital currency controls the way you lot you live, you will be connected via microchip into the cloud. And everything in your about your body, your health, your organs, your financial information. Look at uh, Bangladesh, and as I close out, I'm going to use this right now. I'm going to get into this real quick. Look at what's happening right now in Bangladesh. Let me pull this up for you. Okay, and by the way, um, because those video cams have resurfaced uh, with the George Floyd issue, Jason Whitlock, who happens to be a black man, Jason Whitlock is a black man. He writes for Outkick.com. He said, Lake video exposures exposes George Floyd's death as tragedy and race hoax and only meant to divide us. That's coming from a black man saying the George Floyd ho uh, death is a race hoax. Right? Outkick.com. Get past your racial divide. It's a waste of your time. Waste of your time, folks. Okay, biometricupdate.com. Let me get into this real quick. Um, try to make it quick. The ID2020... Alliance has launched a new digital identity program at its annual summit in New York. This was written last year, September 20. Actually, in fact, it was written just before Event 201 by the Gates Foundation in New York and written about a month before the Wuhan Games in China uh, and written, therefore, a month, uh, and, and therefore, three or four months, well, three months before the, quote, COVID virus was uh, leaked in Wuhan. Okay. These things add up, folks. All these things add up. The Rockefeller Foundation has a 100-year forecast on how health care should be administered globally 
100 years. They're not thinking about making their house payment next month. They're not thinking about making their car payment next next week. They're not thinking about buying food to put on the table and feed their kids tonight. They're thinking about how to rule and administer health care in the next 100 years. Wake up. Wake up, America. I mean, I'm not... I, I, of course, I'm doing this for my own good, but more than anything, I'm doing this for your good. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not getting paid. I, I'm not getting paid. Unlike Bill Gates, who donates his, his, his fortune to philanthropy. Really? He did that, what, 10 years ago, 15 years ago? In that time span, his, his net worth is almost doubled. Almost doubled. Yet he wants every one of you vaccinated. And I'll tell you why, in my opinion. ID 2020 Alliance, which Microsoft is uh, funding, has launched a new digital, digital identity pro program uh, at its annual summit in New York in collaboration with the government of Bangladesh. Vaccine Alliance, Gavi, G-A-V-I, new partners in government, academia, and humanitarian effort. The program to leverage immunizations at an opportunity to establish digital identity was unveiled ID 2020 in partnership with the Bangladesh government's access to information A2I program, the Directorate General of Health services and Gavi accordance to the announcement uh, let me try to get to um, try to get to here we go uh, digital IDs have already been incorporated into vaccine injections in countries such as Bangladesh and even here at home in Austin the city of Austin ID 2020 and several other partners are working together with homelessness homeless people and the service providers who engage with them to develop a blockchain enabled digital identity platform called MyPass to empower homeless people with their own identity data. Oh, so lucky, right? Lucky them. Lucky, lucky them. Homeless in Austin. As you may know, blockchain was created by a person or group of people using the name Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008 to serve as the public transaction ledger of the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. Published in The Economist 2015. That'd be a Wikipedia. Okay, but you're going to find that information about Bangladesh and Austin at biometricsupdate.com. Why is a forced vaccination coming your way, folks? It's to link you to the cloud-based digital, crypt likely cryptocurrency that the Federal Reserve has planned to initiate in this country. The demise of America will be you doing nothing about it. Um, I think I'm going to end it there, folks. I think I'm going to end it there. I've given you enough to think about, cross-check me, cross-reference me, um, do what you may, but that is where this is going. <clears throat> COVID-19 in large part is likely a hoax, okay? I'm not saying it's not a real virus, I'm not saying it's not killing people, but I'm saying the numbers are inflated, I'm saying the threat is completely misleading, okay? And I'm saying the end result is economics. I'm saying, I'm suggesting you watch Catherine Austin Fitz and see her angle on it. The dollar is being crashed, run to the ground, because there's no gold to back it, folks. There's no gold. You want to go? Let's drive to Fort Knox. I'll go with you. We'll go knock on the door. We'll demand. We'll demand. And, and, and see... That's what Americans need to be doing. Americans need to wake up from their slumber, get past these ridiculous racial movements. Okay, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not condoning a peaceful race, racial movement. Everybody needs to be treated with equality and dignity. Okay, uh, Martin Luther King set that very well. Okay, in my in my view, he is a hero. All right. I, I don't care what color you are. You do good things to humanity. That's what's important. Okay. Um, right now, the BLM movement, movement, in my view, is not doing good things, folks. Not doing good things. They've taken it way too far, and these professional sporting teams have allowed it taken way too far. They got these logos painted. They're wearing their shirts. They're kneeling for the anthem. They're walking out on the anthem. No, this is way too 
for. You don't like this country? You don't like the Constitution? You don't like the fact that it just so happens, okay, it just so happens, and I'm going to throw in another thing, it just so happens that the signers of that Constitution were all white. Don't make that someone else's problem. Appreciate that. You want to better it? Better it. Don't better it by imposing your violence on people. Okay, the same thing goes to the, to, to the young, white, driven Antifa, which is, which is you know, the, those punks are, are causing chaos and divide. So th it goes both ways. It goes both ways. And it just so happens that Anthony Johnson, I believe is his name, was a black man in New England, the first registered owner of an indentured servant, slave. Yes, a black American man owned was the first slave owner in this you know, in, in the United States. Okay? It's fact. So don't waste your time with the black the black versus white versus Hispanic versus Asian versus whatever you want to verse it for. Don't waste your time with that, folks. You need to get to the crux of the problem. The crux of the problem is money. Follow the money. Follow the money. You need to ban and audit. You need to know where your gold is. Your ancestors that worked so hard, regardless of the industry they worked in, you've inherited the country. You need to make sure that wealth is in your country. So when that dollar crashes, there's something to support it. I guarantee you, when it crashes, nothing's going to bail it out. You're going to have the UN Bank or something. Is there a UN Bank? You're going to have some type of international organization come and bail it out. And the bailout is going to be a digital currency. And there's zero value in digital currency. You are the value. You are the value. And it makes sense. That's why these tech platforms... Because who's going to be the winner? In a digital currency, who's going to win? The tech companies are going to win. The tech companies are going to win. Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Twitter. Tech companies will win. Primarily Microsoft. That's why Bill Gates is pushing this so hard. Because he's going to cash in big time. Big time. His wealth likely, if every single person on this planet is vaccinated, his wealth will probably double. Whereas guys like Jeff Bezos and... Uh, Zuckerberger and um, Page, you know, these guys, uh, you know, that own these other tech companies. The objective is to have that microchip inside you and to control you. The winner of that game is going to control most of the global economy. But what you need to do is also look at, first, you gotta, you got to stop that from happening if you, if you object to that. But the second thing is you gotta you gotta ask who's funding those people. So 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 you tear down those walls. You want us to tear down a wall? Tear down the Federal Reserve. Demand an audit. Then you tear down Fort Knox. Fort Knox. You demand an audit. Ron Paul's been at this for over a decade. Ron Paul's been at this for over a decade. Where's the gold? Where's the gold? The United States doesn't have any gold, folks. Dr. Peter Beter, B E T E R. Economic advisor under JFK, he said in the early 70s that the Rockefellers, he says this, you can, you can quote him, that the Rockefellers hijacked the gold from Fort Knox. And there has been no gold in that building. Where'd it go? My guess to the IMF in Basel, Switzerland. My guess. It got sold. That's my guess. But my guess, I can almost guarantee it. This United States has no gold. That Federal Reserve is not backed by gold. That Federal Reserve is fiat. They print that just paper. All they do is it's very minimal expenses to print that paper. Now you've got the Minneapolis Federal Reserve calling for a second national lockdown. you got 50 million unemployed right now, folks. A second national lockdown? Second national dock lockdown is going to help the economy? But the only thing that's going to help the economy is when all of you are in vac when we are when we are all vaccinated, and the digital currency gets running. That's when things will get back to normal. Until then, you've got a war on your hands, folks. This has been a discussion of truth. I am Ian Trottier. Thanks for tuning in. Giacomo Knox uh, will be joining us at another time. Um, I unfortunately had to push him back, and he has. Expressed his disappointment, uh, but but I, I had to put, push him back, and I had to, I had to do the show earlier today, folks. Uh, I, I do I do apologize. Uh, please send this to everyone in your family, every one of your friends. Uh, circulate this. Uh, you feel like donating to the program? Donate the program. I'm self-funded. 
Um, and don't take political political uh, sides. If you feel you need to go do it, but what you got to do is you got to follow the money, folks. Follow the money. in Trache for Discussion of Truth. I-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-R, Instagram and Twitter. And until next week, folks. Until next week. Granted, we got another one coming our way. Long live America. Be awesome.